Hello guys, uh, welcome you to this tutorial. In this tutorial, we are going to create our backend. So the first thing that we need to do is to create our database in MySQL. So make sure you have, uh, you have your server up and running. Uh, as I told you earlier on, you need uh, WAMP, uh, Apache, or MAMP server. So the first thing that we need to do is to go to my PHP, my admin. Okay. Is PHP my bin? Then we need to create a, a new database. So mine, I'll name it company. Company. Okay. Then we need the table for our employee. Employees. Okay. Then we need five columns. Okay. The first column is ID, auto incremented, and the primary key. Then the next uh, column, we need position. Next column, we need salary. I think in this case, I think we need a decimal. A decimal. Then We need, oh sorry, we need name, uh, position, salary, so the position is going to change to voucher, uh, I think I'll just put 30 characters, salary, I think you need a decimal, okay. Uh, Next, we need experience. Uh, experience. This one will put it as a text. Okay. Then done. So now we have our database table. The next thing that we need to do is now to create our web services in PHP. So go to your favorite ID, text editor. Then create two files. The first one should be connection.php employee.php and make sure that your root folder is running in your apache server or, or home folder mine is in htdocs so if you're on windows i think it's c uh zamp htdocs then there you create a folder my company then you open your id and create two files and save into the same folder Right, so under connection, this is a file that will handle our connections to the database. Okay. So the first thing that we need to do is to put our database uh, credentials. Okay, in this case, we need a server name. In this case, mine is a local host. So if yours is hosted, so you should do as is required. So database username, mine is the tender, and um, need password. It's my password. Um, then DB, the database name, uh, mine, we call, we call it uh, company, right? Uh, then now we need to instantiate our connection. My SQLI connect. This is a native method that will create to that will connect to a server. So we need a server name, um, username, password, and the DB the database. So we just need to do a check if our connection is successful. So if there is no connection, uh, terminate and show a message. Uh, oh, connection error. Okay, it's done. So our connection file is done. Simple as that. The next thing that we need to do is to create is to 
uh, work on our PHP file that we'll be responsible of inserting data into a database from our mobile app. So it's a PHP file. Okay. The first thing that we need to do is to check for for the data that has been posted that is being posted from the mobile app to our database. But before we do that, we need to add the connection file. So we will we'll include it. So it's called connection.php. Next thing is to check the post variables. So if if post name variable is available and position variable is available and salary variable is available and experience okay if these variables are available then now we need to continue with our query so name so now we are assigning the variables that has been posted from our mobile app into our PHP variables so these are post variables so give the name so I'll just duplicate so in a case you can copy and paste so position so salary salary um, experience experience so now we need to do an insert query to our database so this is how we write it insert into so this is a, a mysql query right so if you're not more if you're not familiar with with mysql queries i encourage you to to find uh, resources that are relevant so that you can understand them and create apps with uh, MySQL database without any challenges. So, so these are the columns to our table. Then these are the values. Okay. So the first value is the name. Um, you have position. with salary and we have experience okay cool now we need to execute our SQL statement so we use a native method my my SQI query so here we need to put the link and the query is there. Okay, so employee, so we need to instantiate uh, an array. Okay, sorry. So this is an empty array. I'm going to use it to generate a JSON, a JSON array at the end. So for our mobile application to understand the data or that is coming from our PHP backend, the data is to come in form of JSON, right? Okay, so I'll show you when you reach at that part. So the next thing that I want, when we insert our employee, I want also to return that employee that has been inserted using the auto-generated ID. Okay, so here I'm going to check if if the data has have been inserted here with our query, right? So if it is true, I need to get that ID that has been recently inserted 
Okay, so my SQLite insert ID. Okay, then I need a connection. Yeah, right. Then also I need to do another key to select. So this time I want to select using ID. So select all from employee table where the ID is equals to ID. Great. The next thing is to is to execute our query my SQLI underscore query. Then we need a link. In this case, our query is Q. Okay, so then the next thing that I want to do is to retrieve is to retrieve the results using a native method again. My S Q I fetch. Also, so I want to get an associative array of of that record, right? Okay, so this one will, will, will assign the associative array to to my row. Then now I want to assign each each value into my employee array. So employee array, I want to add name, which is equivalent to my raw column value in my database name. So I'm going to copy paste. So we need also position. Position salary salary experience experience. Okay, so now we need to generate a JSON, a JSON array. So using native method again, JSON and code. Okay. In this case, our array is employee. Great. So now, so this code will generate a JSON response that will be handled with our mobile app. So I'll show you how to handle JSON responses in Android using Kotlin. Okay, so echo, um, maybe error. Okay. Then think our program is so done. Maybe we can stop it. Yeah. Okay. Great. So our employee website file is, is complete. But we need to test if if it is able to insert data into our database so i'm using a rest client called uh, advanced rest client so you can go under chrome apps then search for it and you install it so this what it does it can serve a lot of work it can help you to do to do your request before you start implementing them in your app so you can you'll be 100 percent sure that your app your web service files are working in the right way so in this case, we are going to test our employee, our employee web sales file, right? Okay, great. <clears throat> so this should be to your path, your local host, your, your folder name in, in htdocs, and your web service file. So this is a post. Then you come here, then you need to put the variables so in this case we are posting name position salary experience these variables these are the variables that have been posted from our um, android app so first the first value is name the second one is salary and the third one is um is what name salary Okay, it's name, position, salary, experience. Okay, name, position, 
salary and experience right so name name it so it's uh, Taylor uh, developer um, salary roughly maybe three thousand um, maybe five years okay so when he sent uh, the rest client should be able to to test so we are having an an error here unnoticed unidentified variable position position in in this employee line 14 you see it has also the validation you can check if where the error is so i'll show this in your window so we are going to line 14 line 14 under employee line 14 here it's saying uh, position 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 okay yeah this where the error is okay great so we'll save then we'll try to to do a recent again okay so click send again wow great so this is a json response that we we receive from our php file so this response has been created from this line right so this is the line responsible for generating our response from our array right i hope you get this correct okay so this the structure of a json response so in this case we have our json response uh, we have a name, position, salary, experience. So our app should be able to to receive this this uh, this record. So this is the record that we have last inserted, right, guys? Well done. Our web service file is done. The next video will go back to our Android app and do a request uh, function where we will send our data from our mobile app to. MySQL database. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next tutorial.